Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us today for another episode of 3D Printing Thursdays. This is Jesse Hallward, 3D Printing Application Engineer with Hawkridge Systems, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the process of applying custom graphics to your 3D printed parts via the process of hydro dipping. Hydro dipping is a great way to improve the look and feel of 3D printed parts, and the process can be used across parts of all shapes, sizes, and even complex geometries. So to start us off, we'll first go over how the application of hydrographics works and what you need to get started. As you can probably tell from the footage I've used so far, the process of hydro dipping involves taking a printed pattern and dipping a part through the pattern while it is floating on top of a volume of water. Wow. The print sheets that are used in hydro dipping are made of PVA or polyvinyl alcohol, which is essentially a water dissolvable film. While the film itself is dissolvable, the printed ink on it is not. So a spray-on activator is also required to liquefy the ink as well when the sheets are placed in water. Once you have dipped your part, it is common to apply a top coat to the part as well to protect the graphic, and then the part is ready to be used. For this particular video, we used a kit that contained some graphic sheets, a primer and base coat for part preparation, an activator spray, and a clear coat to finish our parts once they were dipped and dried. It is also recommended to apply the activator in a well-ventilated area while wearing a mask, and also gloves are useful unless you want some kind of awesome patterns on your hands. And then, of course, you'll need a source of water and a container wide and deep enough to fully submerge whatever parts you'll be working with. Now, in terms of actually going through the hydro dipping process, the first recommended step will be to do a bit of prep work on your part. Since hydro dipping is essentially a painting process, smoother surfaces will generally yield better looking results, and things like sanding or priming your parts can help the graphics stick better. This is optional though, and we did end up with some pretty good looking parts even with raw 3D prints. We also were able to use vapor smoothed parts and got some good end results from those as well. Once you have your part, the next step will be to prep a section of the graphics wrap for dipping. You'll want to make sure the section you cut is big enough to cover the relevant surfaces of your part if you won't be coating the entire surface area, such as what we did with our mouse shells. Painter's tape can be a big help with keeping the film straight and even, and can also help during the actual dipping process, so taping a few outside edges of your film section can be done before cutting if you'd like. We found that taping two edges was a good practice for smaller parts in general. After you have your film section ready to go, the next step will be to lay it flat on top of the water you have. Water around 80 degrees seemed to work best during the actual dipping process, but we got some good results with cooler water as well. After the film is in the water, you'll start to see it wrinkle and bunch up, which is an indicator that the PVA component is starting to dissolve. At this point, you'll want to fully cover the film with the applicator spray so that the graphic ink will also start to dissolve right along with the PVA. Complete spray coverage is pretty important at this point, as ink that is not activated can lead to worse results when attempting to dip an actual part, such as clumping or inconsistent application. Once the spray is applied, the film will fully start to thin out, and if the width of your water container is a lot bigger than the actual surface area of your wrap, then it can spread and become too thin for part application. So, in general, we found that it is a good practice to wait for the film to fully smoothen out before dipping, but if the edges of the film started to break apart, then it was starting to become too thin. Once you have a consistent, smooth film, which does happen fairly quickly after using the applicator, you can start dipping your part. For the best looking results, you'll want to slowly dip your part through the film at an angle rather than directly downward. And if you have an object that requires rotation for complete graphics coverage, such as the wrist brace we've been demoing, you'll want to make sure you start dipping in an area that will allow the film to reach all of your desired surfaces. The actual dipping step is where some tape can come in handy, as this potentially helps keep the film from spreading too much or too quickly in the body of water. But again, this is not required to get good results. After you've dipped your part through the film, 
lightly shaking it to ensure there are no excess clumps is really all that you need to do as the part does not need to stay under the water for any amount of time. Then all that's left is to take the part out of the water and check your results. Once a part has been hydro dipped, it is recommended to rinse it with normal water a bit to remove some of the remaining PVA. If your part does need to be dipped again, then you can use hot water and either sandpaper or a scouring pad to remove some of the excess film and start the process again from the priming step. But if you're happy with the application, the final step is to let the part dry and then apply some clear coat to protect the graphics. After you've done that, you've got a great looking custom 3D print ready to be put to use. Thanks everyone for joining us today for this episode of 3D Printing Thursdays. Hydro dipping can be a quick way to upgrade the aesthetics of your 3D printed parts, and hopefully the steps and tips we've covered in this video will be helpful for your own applications. Feel free to subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel to stay up to date with upcoming content like this. Thanks again everyone, and happy printing.